And for an expert's take on South Korea's decision to terminate the military info-sharing pact with Japan and what impact this will have on future South Korea-Japan relations as well as South Korea-U.S. relations, Dr. Ko Myung-hyun, Research Fellow at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies, joins me in the studio today. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. All right, so first and foremost, to tell us about this military information-sharing mm. agreement, also known as GSOMIA. Mm. I mean, why is the termination of this agreement such a big deal for both South Korea and Japan. Well, what's interesting about GSOMIA is that GSOMIA itself, which stands for General Security and Military Intelligence Agreement, it's actually just an administrative agreement between two, uh, two governments. Mm. So uh, it's not a treaty or like uh, a pact or anything like that. It means such a very low level of agreement in terms of uh, like, uh, easing the, mm. the sharing of uh, classified information between two militaries. So it's actually a very simple thing. But then the problem why, the reason why the termination of this agreement is so important is because it, because of symbolic issues. Mm. Uh, it was very difficult, even though South Korea has signed GSOMIA with not just with Japan, but then with 33 other countries okay. around the world, uh, it, uh, signing this particular international sharing agreement with Japan was politically very sensitive in Korea uh, because uh, yeah, there's a connotation that the uh, Japanese military mm. could uh, have, some, have some sort of uh, influence in the Korean security affairs. So there's a very like, a, a, a sensitive issue because of the historical uh, feelings that the Korean uh, you know, nation actually has over Japan. Mm. But, then, uh, but then also, Jisomi has also served when it was after it was signed. It was also uh, represented a beginning of a of a uh, very like a significant military cooperation, not just between Korea and Japan, but between Korea, Japan, and the United States. Mm. So it carried a lot of symbolic issues. It connoted that finally Korea and Japan could uh, leave behind these all these historical issues and move forward in a more like a positive and a more productive cooperation, not just in economics but also in security. Mm. So that's the reason why the termination of this agreement has a lot of political meaning and has a lot of, a lot of meaning in terms of security cooperation in Northeast Asia that includes the United States. Mm. So this. This is a reason why the United States is extremely upset about uh, the termination of this agreement. Well, this decision from mm. Seoul, did this uh, catch you by mm. surprise, personally? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I mean, uh, there's this expectation that uh, given, how, well, given the diplomatic uh, circumstances that surround South Korea at the moment, uh, South Korea is, uh, you know, essentially, uh, is uh, it's in an impasse when it comes to inter-Korean dialogue. Uh, there is a trace pad and other historical issues going on mm -hmm. over the you know, first labor ruling in the Korean Supreme Court uh, that has turned, uh, I mean, has made Japan extremely upset with uh, South Korea. And there are all these like, uh, you know, tension happening in the alliance with the United States right. because of defense burden sharing and all that. So South Korea is in a, in a corner right now. Mm -hmm. And so there's this expectation and that the South Korea wouldn't really rock the boat at the, pre uh, at the moment and continue with the GSOMI agreement with Japan. So it's very surprising that uh, the Blue House has decided to scrap this agreement at, the ju at, at this juncture when South Korea is not a very good position security-wise and diplomatic-wise. Now, what do you think Japan's reaction to this will be? I mean, we already heard that Japan, mm. uh, Japanese uh, foreign mm. minister said that Taro Kono mm. said that this situation is extremely regrettable that mm. South Korea has decided to scrap the deal. Mm. But what kind of further action can we expect from Japan from here on out? Well, clearly the Japanese are going to experience uh, deterioration in their security uh, uh, situation due to the failure of sharing intelligence with South Korea, mm. but that's going to be in the short run. Uh, in the medium and long run, Japan has made uh, preparations already to sideline South Korea in their uh, more grander uh, defense uh, cooperation uh, framework in Northeast Asia. Right. Uh, Japan has uh, put more weight in cooperating in countries like Australia, mm -hmm. which is further away from them than South Korea, obviously. Uh, so, but then it is also where uh, empower Japanese boys in Washington. Uh, the Japan has been critical of a uh, Moon administration for a long time, and there are all these like, indications that the Jap uh, Abe's administration tried to convince the U.S. administration of uh, giving minor role to South mm. Korea and give more bigger role to Japan. And uh, uh, the you know, termination of GSOMI agreement will confirm uh, the Japanese position and strengthen Japanese opinion, I mean position uh, in the eyes of the U.S. administration. So mm. in that sense, it's going to be a plus for Japan and a, a minus for South Korea. So I think uh, this, uh, this judgment is going to, I mean, this kind of assessment will affect what further step Japanese government could conceivably take uh, against South Korea. I mean, there are other uh, options on, uh, on, the, on the table for Japan, right. such as, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a 
say like interrupting the exchange of people to people exchanges, especially when it comes to academic exchanges, because mm. that's uh, implication to like uh, um, export control because technology sharing is part of export control as well. Right. So there's that issue, and but then I think that Japan from now on will uh, try to refrain from uh, carrying out more punitive measures when it comes to people to people exchanges or economic exchanges because it represents a real pain to the Japanese right. economy. Instead, Japan is going to put more priority in. Uh, uh, you know, reaffirming Japanese position in the diplomatic landscape, as well as in the security cooperation with the United States, in detriment to South Korea's position. So I think uh, that's what uh, so Japan is going to do from now on. So on the surface, I think uh, Japan is, it looks like uh, Japan is not taking any retaliatory mm -hmm. measure against South Korea, but under the surface, I think Japan will be advancing its agenda, which will undermine South mm -hmm. Korea's own agenda. All right, and like we heard, uh, the U.S. is uh, mm. very much concerned and disappointed that this all mm. happened while it was trying to, you know, mm. uh, to persuade the two sides to keep this agreement, but now mm. it's scrapped. So uh, what impact would the decision have on future South Korea-U.S. relations, as well as mm. you mentioned a little bit earlier about the defense cost-sharing talks between the two sides as well? So I think uh, I think of what, uh, one, one of the most uh, biggest concerns about scrapping, scrapping of the Somi agreement is that this is not just, it's not just targeted at Japan, it's also targeted at the United States. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, the working logic here in the Blue House by scrapping this deal was to somehow, uh, like a, you know, force, pressure the United States to intervene more actively uh, to mediate between the Japan and South Korea. Mm -hmm. So, but then I think uh, it's going to be, I mean, the, it's going to blow back against uh, the Blue House because I think the United States will be uh, thinking that uh, maybe South Korea is no longer mm. a trustworthy uh, partner when it comes to advancing security cooperation in Northeast Asia and gradually increase the cost uh, on South Korea, uh, or tangible or intangible costs on South Korea uh, of maintaining mm. this alliance with the United States. So I think um, the short term, I think the United States is going to, as we mentioned, uh, increase the pressure on South Korea to pay more mm. when it comes to defense, uh, defense burden sharing uh, negotiations. But also, uh, I think the U.S. is going to ask South Korea to be more active, become a more active participants uh, in the, you know, the, in the plan, the, a patrol, the joint patrol of the Hormuz Strait, mm. which might actually uh, upset a lot of countries in the Middle East. Mm. Uh, so I think that these are the tangible costs that, uh, uh, that South Korea will have to pay for scrapping this Jisomi agreement. So uh, the uh, scrapping of the agreement has implications beyond our relations with Japan. has a lot of implications with the United States, but globally as well. Most definitely. All right. Thank you so much for your insight today. My pleasure.